Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today's video is intended for two purposes. Number one, many people like me who've been involved in combat robotics for years and take this sport seriously often run into other people who've never even heard of it, and we all end up having the same conversation over and over, so hopefully this video will provide the background info needed to convince you and all your friends that this is the coolest sport in the world. Number two, to show casual TV fans of the various combat robotics shows that this sport exists at lower levels and at a smaller scale spread all over the world. Weight classes ranging from 150 grams or 1 pound to 3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms are actually easy enough and cheap enough for almost anybody to get involved with. The vast majority of people who find out about combat robotics do so by seeing BattleBots on American television or Robot Wars in the UK, and these tournaments, mainly featuring heavyweight robots that are 100 kilograms to 250 pounds, are designed to be a TV show and provide a lot of spectacle. Let the bot battle begin! Whoa, there's that fire-breathing monster known as Grump, right in the face of Whiplash. This is where Whiplash wants to be, attacking the flanks and the sides, trying to get a flip here. Grump slips away, looking to stay squared up to Whiplash. Here's the flame, uh-oh! There's a nice lift from Whiplash, oh. trying to get underneath Grump. Nice move! Whiplash able to land a shot to the underbelly of Grump right there. Explosion right there, and you can see that right flamethrower may be down now. Oh, Whiplash able to get underneath Gruff once again. Oh, he's got him in the corner, trying to really lift him. Oh, we're seeing Matt Vasquez at his best right now, just destroying Gruff from the bottom. Oh, a nice pulverizer hit on Whiplash from Team Gruff in tight quarters, Kenny. And Whiplash right back on top of him, throwing shots and pushing him into the screws. I'm not sure those flamethrowers are working anymore, Chris. That's a real problem for Gruff, and so too is the driving skills of Matt Vasquez. On full display. Wow. Now right in front of us, another big hit by Whiplash. Whiplash just dominating the battle for low ground, and to Gruff's credit, it has refused to get flipped. Countering Whiplash there, and a beautiful overhead shot from Whiplash. Nice little reversal by Gruff, and now he's got Whiplash in his sights. Oh, 90 seconds to go in. Uh oh, Whiplash is starting to smoke. Oh, no. Ruff starting to take over, utilizing its grappling skill there. Almost got a nice lift and a suplex. And all of a sudden, Whiplash's weapon no longer looks to be active. They have dominated the early stretches of this fight. But is the playing field starting to even now, Kenny? That is the big question. Well, Whiplash can utilize that weapon as a lifter, as can Gruff. So two very similar bots right now, Chris. Whiplash takes Gruff for a ride into the side of the box. Has him pinned now. Trying to use the battle box to his advantage. And look what's back and running. At least a little while it was his main weapon. Smoke leaking out of both bots now, Chris. Feels like we're in the eighth round of a heavyweight fight here. Under 45 seconds to go. Can these two warriors make it the full three minutes? Whiplash continuing up at Gruff and dictates the pace, showing no fear, especially without those big flamethrowers in the mix. Yeah, I think Whiplash got to their fuel tank with one of those early shots. And check out Whiplash here, just bullying Gruff. This is one of the most versatile bots you will ever see. It can attack you from below or above, head on, rear facing. Wow, the total package, Chris. And it has all been on display in this fight as the final seconds tick away. This one is going the distance. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. So now this one goes to the judges, scoring on an 11-point system. Your judges are all former BattleBots participants, Derek Young, Lisa Winter, and Jason Bardis. Kenny, you want to talk about Major League Robot Combat? Check out this sequence. Whiplash getting underneath a fire-breathing Gruff, almost flips him, but Gruff uses its forks to counter and kick back up, only to catch an uppercut from Whiplash's disc. That was unreal. Yeah, this was an amazing technical fight. Whiplash dominated the battle for low ground, but Gruff responded with some beautiful counters. Seems like Gruff may have blown a fuel tank early on and lost those flamethrowers. And of course, Matt Vasquez capitalized. 
The results from the judges are in. And the winner by unanimous decision is... Whiplash! The way these operate is different from the way that these smaller weight classes and smaller robot tournaments work in a number of key ways. I want to try and be as broad ranging as possible in this video and try to explain what all the TV shows and smaller tournaments have in common, which is generally how a fight works and the sorts of things you can expect to see at a tournament and during a fight. Then I'll go a bit deeper and explain how the TV shows differ from the usual tournament rules, and discuss the kinds of liberties that different event organizers take with regards to what might be allowed at a specific event. In a follow-up part 2 video, if you're interested to learn more about competing yourself, I'll work with you to read through and understand the entire rules set for a couple of different actual events here in the United States. There are a ton of robot combat events in normal non-pandemic years all across the globe, and I've personally competed at four different locations just within the east coast of the United States, all within a six hour drive from me. If you're in the United States, you might even be able to compete alongside other BattleBots competitors like me at a local event. What is Combat Robotics? Combat Robotics, sometimes referred to as Robot Combat, is a sport like many other sports. The closest analogs in human sports are formula racing and boxing. The aim of the game? Destroy your opponent with your own radio-controlled creation. Or more specifically, make sure your opponent is immobilized for a 10 second countout like in boxing. If your opponent is immobilized and the countdown reaches zero, the winner is declared by knockout. A knockout could come from ripping the other bot into small, little itty bitty pieces, or just flipping them over if they can't self right or drive inverted. Each fight or battle will consist of a 1v1 match with 3 minutes on the clock, similar to a boxing match, but with no following rounds. The robots are built with enough battery power to hopefully get through just one fight and little more, so if a fight goes the distance, the decision of who won is left up to a judge's decision. At some small local competitions, it may be a single referee who declares the winner. In others, a crowd cheer vote, and at BattleBots, there's a set of points assigned based on damage, control, and aggression, with strict rules as to how points should be granted by a panel of three judges. Still. Judges' decisions are always subjective, so the best strategy is usually to rip the other robot apart. That said, there's tons of different ways to do damage, and while in the United States robots with spinning weapons are fairly commonplace, there are still a huge number of variables that decide every fight. Variety of robots. Weapons such as flippers, saws, hammers, axes, crushers, lifters, even inactive wedges and spikes, and much more are allowed. Every weight class has a limit, and most entrants will need to be under that limit, unless they have an unusual weight bonus which varies by event, such as the walker bonus Chomp gets at BattleBots. The vast majority of robots use two or four wheels to drive around. However, there's usually nothing stopping you from entering multiple robots that add up to a total under the weight limit, so you could have a multi-bot with two identical robots like Gemini, or even a cluster of totally different weight bots like Creepy Crawlies or the Four Horsemen. The rules for most events prevent the use of weapons that would be super lame to watch, like a taser or EMP that just shocks the other robot, radio jammers or arena fouling devices like spewing oil or water or dangerous chemicals all over the box, and they prevent the use of nets and other entanglement devices for immobilizing the other bot, or lasers or smoke that intentionally blind the opponent. The vast majority of events also ban all kinds of projectile weapons, so you can't just mount a gun to your robot, since that could easily kill anyone watching in the audience. While many small events ban the use of fire, as most arenas have wooden floors, some allow gas-based flamethrowers or even gas-powered weapons as well. However, if you want to make a robot that's a huge rolling sphere, you can do that. Want to make a six-legged spider bot? A propeller-powered hovercraft robot? A robot where the whole thing spins to become a weapon? A walker using gyroscopic procession to move? As long as it meets the definition of controlled translational movement, go for it! The variety of types of robots you might face in the arena is a big part of what makes building a robot exciting, fun, and challenging. You need to prepare for anything. Getting involved. So, how do people get started? Mostly, they just show up at a local event. If you want to see what this sport is all about, that's the best way to get started, rather than trying to go through the difficulty of building a robot right away. When you see what these robots can do up close and personal, and how different designs behave, you'll gain some intuition for what does and doesn't work in a design. The formation of teams and cost of construction are left completely up to the individual teams or team members. 
There's a set of guidelines to follow while building the robot to ensure the robot can operate safely and can move in a controlled manner, but most events have no limits on team size, and it's commonplace for an individual builder like myself to build multiple small robots and compete with them at several events a year under a single team name. It's also common for universities to have a team of multiple people all working just to build one or two robots. For the televised shows like BattleBots, the robots often cost as much or more than a new car, but with the help of some money or free machining services from sponsors, thanks Send Cut Send, the costs can be kept semi-reasonable. I'm a member of Team Bots and Stuff Robotics, which is the team behind the BattleBot Bloodsport. The team consists of many other talented engineers and is captained by Justin Marple. However, Team Just Cause Robotics is mainly a solo venture for now, funded almost entirely by myself out of pocket. For smaller weight classes like the 1 pound and 3 pound class, you can get started for just a few hundred bucks, and a lot of the tools and equipment, like batteries, chargers, and radios, can be reused on tons of robots in the future, so the cost per robot can be kept very reasonable after your first one. The same radio could be used for a 3 pound robot or a 250 pound monster, for example. If you want to hear about my personal journey into combat robotics, I have just the video for you at the card above. What's next? If you're interested in getting started actually competing yourself, check out the Combat Robotics Facebook group. There's an amazing community of builders, happy to answer questions, as long as you aren't too vague or simply asking, help me build robot. I have a number of tutorials on my own YouTube channel you may find helpful later on, but they might be a bit too technical for someone just starting out. Instead, I recommend you check out the Witch Doctor Jr. Robot Building video playlist I'll have linked down in the description and in a card above. That series has all the info you'll need to decide if you want to buy a kit or start building from scratch, and it'll teach you all the basic knowledge you'll need to get started in either case. After that, if you're hungry for more, or if you already have a background in physics, electronics, or just making things in general, check out my own tutorial videos. I deep dive into the science behind a lot of things that make robots work well, and how to learn from that to improve your own robot designs. I also have a few more basic guide videos where I walk through a process like how to modify a servo to rotate continuously, or how to fit failsafes and arming switches on a radio, etc. I also have overview videos for my own robots where I explain the motivation behind all of my own design choices on a robot, and any changes or upgrades I have made or plan to make. I also document how my robots do after each event I attend with a detailed event report video where you can follow along fight by fight, see the damage done to each robot and the repairs that we needed to make. I'm also far from the only Combat Robotics YouTube channel. You can find plenty more tutorials, build overviews, and event reports on YouTube from Team Panic, Robert Cowan, and more. That's all I have for you today. Remember to keep an eye out for part 2 of this, where I go into detail over the rules of a couple events. If you want to be notified of that video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you like this video, hit like, and if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching!